Keen from Cooking Chefs and guys today we got a new video we're going to be making nachos right so these nachos they got something special because we're going to be making the proper nachos from some fajitas we're just going to cut them and fry them you'll see and then we're going to be making some guacamole sour cream and some tomato sauce this tomato sauce is also going to be a ragu because we're going to be cooking it uh, with the meat for about an hour and a half or two hours I'm just going to really cook it slowly slowly and you'll see it's going to be just wonderful uh, we're going to put on a couple of toppings loads of cheese give it a grill and guys you'll just see how amazing these nachos are for a little date at home or something they'll just be perfect okay so for the ragu we're going to dice the vegetables pretty small so like that we want them to uh, kind of dissolve or to get really really soft and lose their texture uh, over the hour and a half or two hours we're going to have them cooking uh, with the rest of the vegetables the tomatoes what we can do is that we can peel them with the knife if you have a sharp knife or if not you can just make a little cross at the top of them and put them in boiling water for about a minute or so and you'll be able to peel them really easy right uh, so after that you're just going to dice them and you're going to put them in the pan, right? So the mixture of vegetables we're going to start cooking with a bit of beef fat and then we're going to cook on separate pans the meat. We're going to sear it, we're going to leave a little bit of meat stuck to the bottom of the pan which is going to add more flavour to our ragu and then we're going to be adding our vegetables with our fat into our meat and we're going to leave that cooking with the tomatoes, the canned tomatoes for about an hour and a half or two hours, right? So guys, no more chit chat, let's start cooking. We're going to start by making our ragu. Our ragu is going to have one carrot, one branch of celery, two tomatoes, one can of tomatoes, and a little bit of meat, okay? Instead of using olive oil, uh, we're going to be using beef fat, because it's a lot more tasty. So we're going to start off by cutting really small our celery and our carrot. Yet we want to do this because if the pieces are really small, in the hour and a half or two hours we're going to have this uh, cooking, the texture is going to be practically gone and all the flavors are really going to be blended in with the sauce. So since we're not going to be cooking it for so so long, we really want to cut them really nice and small. So the reason why I'm using two fresh tomatoes and after a can of tomatoes, it's because I think it's a nice uh, blend of flavors in between the fresh tomatoes and the canned tomatoes, as the canned tomatoes have a lot more acidity. Also, if you wanna regulate that acidity, you can always add a little bit of sugar, right? So we're just gonna cut these in squares as these are gonna dissolve really fast. In squares, but I mean, I mean in quarters. And we're just gonna proceed to put a little bit of beef fat on the pot and we're gonna just put start frying them until they got a little bit of color. So we're going to start cooking our veg in a one pot and then we're going to prepare a second pot real hot for our meat. Okay, so for our meat we want to cook it super hot so the meat actually sticks to the bottom of the pan. This is going to be extra flavor and the reason why I want to do this is because if we did it with the fat actually well it wouldn't stick so much to the pan. So once it, our meat is cooked we can add quickly our veg to this meat pot and we can forget about the other pot and we can finish cooking it in this one. So a small tiny little detail that I haven't mentioned before is that these nachos are going to be made by practically the, the nachos are going to be the fajitas just fry them then we're going to have the ragu which we've mentioned and then it comes a guacamole and sour cream okay the sour cream isn't going to be on this video but at the end of the video or just out here on top you'll see a recommendation to another video so make sure you che check this video before you make these nachos sour cream is essential so for making a guacamole we basically need very few ingredients all right i'm making guacamole with ingredients i have at home i'm not going out of my way to get the perfect ingredients but uh, normally they use red onion, fresh coriander and lime juice, right? Maybe some chili also, a jalapeno they can also put into it. Uh, we don't have any chilies and yellow onion and some coriander powder. Anyways, it's going to be a good result anyways as we want basically the avocado cream. And yeah, once we got this, we can continue with the rest of the ingredients. 
So we're gonna start off by chopping up the onion. So we're gonna blend and process the, the onion first as we want the onion to be in r as small as possible. So here I am cutting it pretty small at first and then we're just gonna proceed to blend it. After we blend the onion, it's just left to cut up the avocados, throw them in there, put the lime juice and lemon juice, add your powder or if you have fresh coriander, uh, and your salt. Bob's your ankles. All right, so we're gonna start with our fajitas. These are gonna be our nachos, so we're gonna cut them in six. These are normal burrito size fajitas, and we're just gonna cut them in six, leave them aside, and we're gonna prepare a little bit of garnish that we're gonna have for our nachos. So they're gonna be scallions or spring onions, and then some pickled red onion, which we've made the pickle at home. We'll have soon a video on the channel of how to make a perfect pickle. And yeah, we're just gonna dice it up, and we're gonna reserve it until we play it. So to continue with our nachos, we're going to start frying our fajitas. So you want to have that oil about 160 degrees and you don't want to fry it until it has too much color. You want to fry it until it's a bit soft, right? We're going to finish them off in the oven at about 50 degrees just so it's in a dry environment. So we want to cook it in, in not very hot oil and you just want to give it a little bit of color. I did three at the time and uh, until I finished the pack. If you have a bigger container, we'll knock yourself out. You can just put more at the same time. So the point about using the oven here in this case is because this is going to finish giving it the final crisp. So you don't want your nachos to be completely crispy off the fryer because or else they will just fall apart once you put them in your mouth. But if they finish off in the oven, they will have that kind of soft texture in the inside and it's just going to be perfect for the cheese. So what we're gonna do now before we cook up the cheese, we're gonna put the nachos on a plate. We're gonna plate it up. We're gonna put our ragu that it's been cooking for so long and it smells so nice. We're gonna put it on top of our nachos nicely. You can even put a second layer of ragu in between your nachos. And then we're gonna put our cheese. So I got a white cheddar cheese and I got red cheddar cheese. A mixture makes it super sticky and we love sticky cheese. So yeah, after this, we're gonna add a little bit of gorgonzola. This is soft gorgonzola. And then we're just gonna pop it in the oven. So after about five, seven minutes, at about 180, 200 degrees, you really want that cheese to get some color, to really melt nicely. So you wanna grate that, right? So you're gonna be grating at about, yeah, 180 to 200 degrees. You can even go higher if you want for less time. Just keep an eye on it so your cheese doesn't burn. So now for the plating, what we're gonna do is add our scallions, then our pickled red onion, which is gonna add this acidity to the nachos, which we're gonna crave for, our sour cream that we're gonna add in the end of this video, make sure you check it out, and the guacamole. So guys, that's been our nachos. I hope you guys trip with this video. Smash that like button, and don't forget to leave your opinion on the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye bye.